Hello, and welcome to Storytime and Crafts with me, Karasu. Uh, today, I am actually working on a paint by numbers instead of a diamond painting. We are going to be reading the Trials of Apollos, chapters 4 and 5. I have been uh, kind of leaning away from diamond painting as the days get warmer, so... I decided that a little bit of painting while I have a chance without kids around. School is ending this week, so we will be full-blown summer vacation with my kids, so they may come and go. Um, I'm going to be trying to do my videos when they are either asleep or doing something else. Um, let's see here. My fan that I am painting, I'll have down in the description box if you guys want to find it. The website that I get it from is from Ch a China website. Um, you have to be careful when it comes to what you get from the site because there are stolen artwork on there. Um, so that's kind of up to you if you want to get something like this, which is, um, oh, where is my picture? Here it is. Um, it is basically a train with a, a shadow chain in the background with a sakura tree. Um, I couldn't find this other than in public domain, so that's why I have it. If so, it does belong to somebody, I won't be showing this video. Or I'll be taking it down and remaking it for the two chapters that are part of it. So without further ado, let's get into those chapters. So chapters... Four and five. Chapter four. Case D. Jackson. No gold-plated throne for guests. Seriously, dude. Another thing. I have never understood. How can you mortals live in such tiny places? Where is your pride? Your sense of style? The Jackson apartment had no grand throne room, no colonnades, no terraces or banquet hall, or even a thermal bath. It had a tiny living room with an attached kitchen and a single hall leading to what I assumed were bedrooms. The place was on the fifth floor, and while I wasn't so picky as to expect an elevator, I did find it odd there was no landing deck for flying chariots. What did they do when guests from the sky wanted to visit? Standing behind the kitchen counter making a smoothie was a starkly attractive mortal woman, about 40. Her long brown hair had a few gray streaks, but her bright eyes, quick smile, and favorite tie-dye sundress made her look much younger. As we entered, she turned off the blender and stepped out from behind the counter. Gary Sybil I cried, Madam, there is something wrong with your midsection. The woman stopped, mortified, and looked down at her huge swollen belly. Well, I am seven months pregnant. I wanted to cry for her. Carrying such a weight didn't seem natural. My sister, Artemis, had experience with midwives, but I had always found it one area of a healing art best left to others. How could you bear it? I asked. My mother, Leto, suffered through a long pregnancy, but only because Hera cursed her. Are you cursed? Percy stepped to my side. Um, Apollo, she's not cursed. And can you not mention Hera? Your poor mother, I shook my head. A goddess would never allow herself to be so encumbered. She no. would give birth as soon as she felt like it. That would be nice, the woman agreed. Percy Jackson coughed. So anyway, Mom, this is Apollo and his friend Meg. Guys, this is my mom. The mother of Jackson smiled and shook our hands. Call me Sally. Her eyes narrowed as she studied my bruised nose. Dear, that looks painful. What happened? I attempted to explain, but I choked on my words. I 
the civil tongue god of poetry could not bring himself to describe my fall from grace to this kind woman i understand why poseidon had been so smitten with her silly jackson passed just the right combination of compassion strength and beauty she was one of those rare mortal women who could connect spiritually with a god as an equal to be neither terrified of us nor greedy of what we could offer but to provide us with true companionship if i had still been an immortal i might have flirted with her myself but i was now a sixteen-year-old boy my mortal form was working its way upon my state of mind i saw sally jackson as a mom a fact that both concerned and embarrassed me i thought about how long it had been since i had called my own mother i should probably take her to lunch when i get back to olympus tell you what sally patted my shoulder percy can help you get bandaged and cleaned up i can asked percy sally gave him a slightly motherly eyebrow raise there's a first aid kit in your bathroom sweetheart apollo could take a shower then wear your extra clothes you two are about the same size that percy said is truly depressing sally cupped her hand under meg's chin thankfully meg did not bite her sally's expression remained gentle and embracing but i can see the worry in her eyes no doubt she was thinking who dressed their poor girl like a traffic light i have some clothes that might fit you dear sally said pre-pregnancy clothes of course let's get you cleaned up then we'll get you something to eat i like food meg muttered sally laughed well we have that in common percy you take apollo we'll meet back here in a while in short order i was showered bandaged and dressed in jackson hand-me-downs percy left me alone in the bathroom to take care of all this myself for which i was grateful he offered me some ambrosia and nectar food and drink of the gods to heal my wounds but i was not sure if it would be safe to consume it in my mortal state i didn't want to self combust so i stuck with mortal first aid supplies when i was done i stared at my bruised face in the bathroom mirror perhaps teenage onks had permitted the clothes because i felt more like a sulking high schooler than ever i thought how unfair it was that i was being punished how lame my father was how no one else in the history of time had ever experience problems like mine of course all that was imperially true no arguments was required at least my wounds seemed to be healing at a faster rate than a usual mortal the swelling in my nose had subsided my ribs still ached but no longer felt as if someone were knitting a sweater inside my chest with hot needles accelerated healing was the least zeus could do for me i was a god of medicinal arts after all zeus probably just wanted me to get well quickly so i could endure more pain and i was grateful nonetheless i wondered if i should start a small fire in percy jackson's sink perhaps burning some bandages and thanks but i decided that might strain the jackson's hospitality i examined the black t-shirt percy had given me embroidered on the front was led zeppelin's logo for their record label winged I icarus falling from the sky i had no problem with led zeppelin i had inspired all their best songs but i had a sneaking suspicion that percy had given me this shirt as a joke the fall from the sky yes <laughs> I didn't see, need to be a god of poetry to spot the metaphor. I decided not to comment on it. I shouldn't give him that satisfaction. 
I took a deep breath. Then I did my usual motivational speak in the mirror. You are gorgeous and people love you. I went out to face the world. Percy was sitting on his bed, staring at the trail of blood drops I had made across his carpet. Sorry about that, I said. Percy spread his hands. Actually, I was thinking about the last time I had a nosebleed. Oh? The memory came back to me, though hazy and incomplete. Athens, the apocalypse... We gods had battled side by side with Percy Jackson and his comrades. We defeated an army of giants, but a drop of Percy's blood hit the earth and awakened the earth mother, mother Gaia, who had not been in a good mood. That's when Zeus turned to me. He'd accused me of starting the whole thing just because Gaia had duped one of my prodigy, a boy named Octavius, into plaguing the Roman and Greek demigod camps into a civil war that almost destroyed human civilization. I ask you, how was that my fault? Regardless, Zeus had held me responsible for Octavius's decision of grandeur. Zeus seemed to consider egotism a trait the boy had inherited from me. That was ridiculous. I was much too self-aware to be egotistical. What happened to you, man? Percy's voice stared me from my reverie. The war ended in August. It's January. It is. I suppose the wintry weather should have been a clue, but I hadn't given it much thought. Last I saw you, Percy said. Zeus was chewing you out at the Acropolis. Then, bam, you v he vaporized you. Nobody's seen or heard from you for six months, I tried to recall, but my memory of godhood were getting fuzzier rather than clearer. What had happened in the last six months? Had I been in some kind of sta stasis? Had Zeus taken that long to decide what to do with me? Perhaps there was a reason he'd waited until that moment to hurl me to earth. Father's voice still rang in my ears. Your fault. Your punishment. My shame felt fresh and raw as if the conversation had just happened, but I could not be sure. After being alive for many millennia, I had trouble keeping track of time, even in the best of circumstances. I could hear a song on Spotify and think, oh, that's new. Then I realized it was Mozart's Piano Concerto No. 20 in D minor from 200 years ago. Or I'd wonder why Herodotus, the historian, wasn't in my contact list. Then I'd remembered Herodotus didn't have a smartphone because he had been dead since the Iron Age. It's very irritating how quickly you mortals die. I don't know where I've been, I admitted. I have some memory gaps. Percy winced. I hate memory gaps. Last year I lost an entire semester thanks to Hera. Oh yes, I couldn't quite remember what Percy Jackson was talking about. During the war with Gaia, I had been forced most focused mostly on my own fabulous explosions but i suppose he and his friends had undergone a few minor hardships well never fear i said there are always new opportunities to win fame that's why i came to you for help he gave me that confused expression again as if he had wanted to kick me when I was sure he must be struggling to contain his gratitude. Look, man, would you please refrain from calling me man, I asked. It is a painful reminder that I am a man. Okay, Apollo. I'm fine with driving you and Meg to camp, if that's what you want. I never turn away a demigod who needs help. Wonderful. Do you have something besides the Prius? A Mitsubishi, perhaps? I'd settle for a Lamborghini. But, 
Percy continued. I cannot get involved in another big prophecy or whatever. I have made promises. I stared at him, not quite comprehending. Promises? Percy laced his fingers. They were long and nimble. He would have made an excellent musician. I lost most of my junior year because of the war with Gaia. I've spent this entire fall playing catch-up with my classes. If I want to go to college with Annabeth next fall, I have to stay out of trouble and get my diploma. Annabeth, I tried to place the name. She is the blonde scary one. That's her. I promised her specifically that I would not get myself killed while she's gone. Gone? Percy waved vaguely towards the north. She's in Boston for a few weeks. Some family emergency. Point is, you're saying you cannot afford me any undivided service to restore me to my throne. Uh, yeah. He pointed at the bedroom door. Besides, my mom's pregnant. I'm going to have a baby sister. I'd like to be around to get to know her. Well, I understand that. I remember when Artemis was born. Aren't you twins? I've always regarded her as my little sister. Percy's smiles twitched. Anyway, my mom's got that going on, and her first novel is going to be published this spring as well. So I'd like to stay alive long enough to... Wonderful, I said. Remind her to burn... The proper sacrifice, Calypso is quite touchy when novelists forget to thank her. Okay, but what am I saying? I can't go off on another world-stomping quest. I can't do that to my family. Percy glanced towards the window. On the sill was a potted plant with delicate silver leaves, probably moon lace. I've already given my mom enough heart attacks for one lifetime. She's just about forgiving me for disappearing last year, but I swore to her and Paul that I wouldn't do anything like that again. Paul? My stepdad. He's a teacher in service today. He's a good guy. I see. In truth, I didn't see. I wanted to get back to talking about my problems. I was impatient with Percy for turning the conversation to himself. Sadly, I have found this sort of self-centeredness common among demigods. You do understand that I must find a way to return to Olympus, I said. This will probably involve many harrowing tales with a high chance of death. Can you turn down such glory? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. Sorry. I pursed my lips. It always disappointed me when mortals put themselves first and failed to see the big picture. The importance of putting me first. But I had to remind myself that the young man had helped me out so many previous occasions. He had earned my goodwill. I understand, I said with incredible generosity. You will at least escort us to Camp Half-Blood? That I can do. Percy reached into his hoodie pocket and pulled out a ballpoint pen. For a moment, I thought he wanted my autograph. I couldn't tell how often that happened. Then I remembered the pen was the disguise for his sword, Riptide. He smiled, and some of that old demigod mischief twinkled in his eyes. Let's see if Meg is ready for a field trip. Chapter 5. Seven Layer Dip. Chocolate Chip Cookies in Blue. I love this woman. Sally Jackson was a witch to rival Cirrus. She had transformed Meg from a street urchin into a shockingly beautiful young girl. Meg's dark pegboy hair was glossy and brushed. Her round face was scrubbed clean of grime. Her cat eye glasses had been polished to a rhinestone sparkle. She had evidently ins insisted on keeping her red sneakers, but she wore new black leggings and knee-length flock of shifting green hue. 
Miss Jackson had figured out how to keep Meg's old look but tweak it to more complimentary. Meg had an elvish springtime aura that reminded me very much of a druid. In fact, I suddenly waved an emotional overwhelm me. I sh choked back a sob. Meg pouted. Do I look that bad? No, no, I managed. It's just, I wanted to say, you remind me of someone. But I didn't dare open that line of communication. Only two mortals ever had broken my heart. Even after so many centuries, I couldn't think of her. I couldn't say her name without falling into despair. Don't misunderstand me. I felt no attraction to Meg. I was 16 or 4,000 plus, depending on how you want to look at it. She was very young, 12 year, twelve. But the way she appeared now, Meg McAfee might have been the daughter of my favorite love if my former love had lived long enough to have a child. It was too powerful. I looked away. Well, Sally Jackson said with a forced cheerfulness, how about I make lunch while you three talk? She gave Percy a warning glance, then headed to the kitchen. Her hands preoccupied over her pregnant belly. Meg sat on the edge of the sofa. Percy, your mom is so normal. Thanks, I guess. He picked up a stack of text preparation manuals from the coffee table and chucked them aside. I see you like to study, I said. Well done, Percy snorted. I hate to study. I've been granted administration for a full scholarship to New Roman University but they'll still request me to pass all my high school courses and score well on the SAT. Can you believe that? Not to mention I have to pass the DSTOMP. What's that, my gas? An exam for Roman demigods, I told her. The demigod standard testing of mad power. Percy frowned. That's what it stands for. I should know. I wrote the music and poetry and analysis section. I will never forgive you for that, Percy said. Meg swung her feet. So you're really a demigod, like me. Afraid so, Percy sank into the armchair, leaving me to take the sofa next to Meg. My dad is a godly one, Poseidon. What about your parents? Meg's legs went still. She studied her chewed nails. The matching crescent ring glinted on her middle finger. Never knew them much. Percy hesitated. Foster home? Step parents? I thought of a certain plant, the Momosa protica, which the god Pan created. As soon as it left, the leaves are touched, the plant closed up indefinitely. Meg seemed to be playing Momosa, folding inward under Percy's questions. Percy raised his hand. Sorry, didn't mean to pry. He gave me an inquiring look. So how did you guys meet? I told him the story. I may have exaggerated my brave defense against Cad and Mikey just for narration effect, you understand. As I finished, Sally Jackson returned. She set down a bowl of tortilla chips and a casserole dish full with ambrosia dip and multicolored areas like sedimentary rock. I'll be back with the sandwiches, she said, but I had some leftover seven layer dip. Mmm, Percy dug in with a tortilla chip. She's kind of famous for this, guys. Sally ruffled his hair. That's guacamole, sour cream, refried beans, salt, seven layer. I looked up in wonder you knew seven is my sacred number you invented this for me sally whip wiped her hands on the apron well actually i cannot take credit you are too modest i tried some of the dip it tasted almost as good as ambrosia nachos you will have immortal immortal fame for this sally jackson that's sweet she pointed to the kitchen. I'll be right back. Soon 
We were plowing through the turkey sandwiches, chips and dip, and banana smoothies. Meg ate like a chipmunk, shoving more food in her mouth than she could possibly chew. Her belly was full. I had never been so happy. I had a strange desire to fire up an Xbox and play Call of Duty. Percy, I said, your mom is awesome. I know, right? He finished a smoothie. So back to your story. You have to be Meg's servant now. You guys barely know each other. Barely is generous, I said. Nevertheless, yes, my fate is now linked with young McAfee. We are cooperating, Meg said. She seemed to savor the word from his pocket. Percy fished his ballpoint pen. He tapped it thoughtfully against his knee. And this whole turning into a mortal thing, you've done it twice before? Not by choice, I assured him. The first time we had a little rebellion in Olympus. We tried to overthrow Zeus. Percy winced. I'm guessing that didn't go well. I got most of the blame, naturally. Oh, and your father, Poseidon. We were both cast down to earth as mortals, forced to serve Lemnon, the king of Troy. He was a harsh master. He even refused to pay us for our work. Meg nearly choked on her sandwich. I have to pay you? I had a terrifying image of Meg McAfee trying to pay me with bottle caps, marbles, and pieces of colored string. Never fear, I told her. I wouldn't be presenting you with a bill, but as I was saying, the second time I became mortal, Zeus got mad because I killed some of his cyclopses. Percy frowned. Dude, not cool. My brother is a cyclops. These were wicked cyclopses. They made a lightning bolt that killed one of my sons. Meg bounced on the arm of the sofa. Percy's brother is a cyclops? That's crazy. I took a deep breath trying to find my happy place. At any rate, I was bound to admit to the king of Thessaly. He was a kind master. I liked him so much. I had all his cows have twin calves. Can I have baby cows? Meg asked. Well, Meg, I said, first you have to have some mommy cows. You see, guys, Percy interrupted. So just to recap, you have to be Meg's servant for some unknown amount of time, I said. Probably a year, probably more. And during that time, I will undoubtedly face many trials and hardships. Like getting me my cow, Meg said. I gritted my teeth. What those trials will be, I do not know yet. But if I suffer through them and prove I am worthy, Zeus will forgive me and allow me to become a god again. Percy did not look convinced, probably because I had not sounded convincing. I had to believe my mortal punishment was temporary, as it had been the last two times. Yet Zeus had created a strict rule for baseball and prison sentences. Three strikes, you're out. I could only hope that this did not apply to me. I need time to get my bearings, I said. Once we get to Camp Half-Blood, I can consult with Charon. I can figure out which of my godly powers remain with me in this mortal form. If any, Percy said. Let's think positive. Percy sat back in the armchair. Any idea what kind of spirits are following you? Shiny bubbles, Meg said. They were shiny and sort of bubbly. Percy nodded gravely. Those are the worst kind. It hardly matters, I said. Whatever they are, we have to flee. Once we reach camp, the magical border will protect me. And me, Meg asked. Oh yes, you too. Percy frowned. Apollo, if you're really mortal, like 100% mortal, can you even get into Camp Half-Blood? The seven-layer dip began to churn in my stomach. Please don't say that. Of course I can get in. I have to. But you can get hurt in battle now, Percy mused. Then again, maybe monsters would 
monsters would ignore you because you're not important. Stop. My hands trembled. Being a mortal was traumatic enough. The thought of being barred from camp, from being unimportant, no, that simply could not be. I'm sure I'll retain some power, I said. I'll, I'm still gorgeous, for instance. If I could just get rid of the acne and lose some flab, I must have other abilities. Percy turned to Meg. What about you? I heard you threw mean garbage bags. Any other skills you sh we should know about? Summoning lightning? Making toilets explode? Meg smiled, hesitated. That's not a power. Sure it is, Percy said. Some of the best demigods have gotten their start by blowing up toilets. Meg giggled. I did not like the way she was grinning at Percy. I didn't want the girl to develop a crush. We might never get out of here. As much as I enjoyed Sally Jackson's cooking, the divine smell of baked cookies was even now wafting from the kitchen. I needed to make haste to camp. Ahem, I rubbed my hands. How soon can we leave? Percy glanced at the wall clock. Right now, I guess, if you're being followed, I'd rather have monsters on our tail than sniffing around the apartment. Good man, I said. Percy gestured with disdain at his test manuals. I just have to get back tonight. Got a lot of studying. The first two times I took the sat, ugh, if it wasn't for Annabeth helping me out. Who's that? Meg asked. My girlfriend. Meg frowned. I was glad there was no garbage bags near for her to throw. So take a break, I urged. Your brain will be refreshed after an easy drive to Long Island, <laughs> Percy said. There's a, a lazy kind of logic to that. Okay, let's do it. He rose just as Sally Jackson walked in with a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. For some reason, the, cho the cookies were blue, they, but they smelled heavenly, and I should know I'm from heaven. Mom, don't freak out, Percy said. Sally sighed. I hate it when you say that. I'm just going to take these two to camp. That's all. I'll be right back. I think I've heard that before. I promise. Sally looked at him, then Meg. Her expression softened, her inner kindness perhaps overwhelming her concern, overpowering her concern. All right, be careful. It was lovely meeting you both. Please try not to die. Percy kissed her on the cheek. He reached for the cookies, but she moved the plate away. Oh no, she said. Apollo and Meg can have one, but I'm keeping the rest as hostage until you are back safely. And hurry out, dear. I would be a shame if Paul ate them all when he gets home. Percy's expression turned grim. He faced us. You hear that, guys? A batch of cookie depends on me. If you get me killed on the way to camp, I'm going to, going to be ticked off. Well, that was fun to listen to. Unfortunately, it seems that I've been... Uh still plagued with audio issues and cutting off the ends of my chapters. I'll be working hard to fix that in the next couple of chapters. It'll take me a little bit. The question I asked on the previous two chapters was, how do you think Apollo is handling this? Uh, in my opinion, he's doing actually pretty well, considering he's been on a, a mortal for, what, less than a couple hours? Yeah, it's his third time, but he's still handling quite well. This go around, uh, do you think Percy should be giving Meg and Apollo a little bit more help? Or is he in the right when it comes to him backing out and going, I have to live my life and you guys can try to figure it out on your own. I went through it. It's your turn sort of mentality. Thank you again for joining me for chapters of four and five. And if you wish to help the, me and this channel, give the uh, video a like and hit the subscribe button. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.